presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport. In the show, Marcus Slaughter represents the power of Real Madrid. Dimitris Diamantidis sets a new milestone in the game of the week. Sinan Guler takes a trip down memory lane. We took a trip to Seska Moscow for the Russian derby. And we bring you the MVP of the round and the top three plays of the week. One of Europe's most spectacular players. This is Marcus Slaughter's third season in the Turkish Airlines Euroleague and his second with Real Madrid. His great athleticism was once the core of his game, but now he is a far more complete player and has a very specific role. When you're younger, you're trying to do everything, and so you try to do too much. You just use your talent wildly, and sometimes that looks bad. And so when you get on like really good teams, uh, you have a specific role. You shrink it down and you know your strengths and you kind of focus on those things and you try to do those every single night. Marcus immediately found the necessary stability and tranquility at Madrid that allows him to focus 100% on his basketball. When you get here, uh, basketball is like second first. You know, first is how is home, off the court. You know, car, your house, what do you need? You know, so if you have a family, you need, you need to, for your school, for your kids, these are things that are right away. And then when you get to practice, you don't think about the outside, you think about only basketball. This could be the year when all dreams come true. This Real Madrid is one of the most spectacular teams ever seen in Europe. However, the road is still long and arduous. Um, I've heard a lot of people uh, tell us like this is the, the way you guys are playing basketball. It's exciting. It's fun. It's something that's going to be in the history. People are going to remember this team of how they used to play. If we can win the Euro League uh, as long as with that. Yeah, I think it would go down as one of the you know one of the best teams you know to ever play in Europe. Marcus's slam dunks are one of the most eye-catching things about this team. It's a skill he has nurtured for a long time, but it has also improved thanks to the great feeling he has with Sergio Rodriguez. We have a relationship to where he just knows and sees me at all times and knows exactly when to throw it, how to throw it, uh, and he just, at the corner of eye, he's always looking. So I know to run fast all the time when I'm on the court with him and uh, I know he's going to find me. And so playing with a player like that, it makes you go extra hard. Some amazing dunks, but there is one that stands out above all others. For me, my number one dunk ever uh, was in the EuroLeague when I played for Bros Baskets and we played against Yuna Kaha Malaga. <laughs> It was, it was pretty fun for me. And, you know, to be to junk over someone who's 7'5 is amazing. That's something that I, I always remember. I think uh, after that, everyone started like, oh, let's, we notice you now, you know? So uh, now it's like, okay, we see other things you can do. The number 44 he wears is in honor of Jamal Slaughter, who died when Marcus was just 10. Because of my brother, uh, he wore this number in high school. When I was growing up, I used to, you know, idolize my brother and, and watch him in high school play. Uh, he passed away, so uh, I, when I, I knew when I was going to play basketball, I wanted to wear his number. After this tragedy, the relationships in the Slaughter household became even more intense and overbearing. I started late because my father was very, very strict. When my brother passed away, he put everything on me so that I can feel his shoes to be as good as him. And my brother was great. This is someone who knows basketball better than most people. So I have to hear him, I have to listen to him. You know, even when you don't want to, because it's your father, you don't want to hear anything he has to say, uh, especially if it's critical. I can't have a great game. He's like, okay, that was good. 
They told me, oh, you can do better. So I can get an A, and he'll be like, oh, why don't you get an A plus? I bring my family every year. Uh, my dad comes at least three times. But I try to bring him when I don't have a game, so he can't see the game. <laughs> but this time he told me, I want to make sure I watch a game. So I'm like, all right, all right, I have to look through the schedule. Marcus's outgoing personality is perfectly suited to the Real Madrid locker room. Our team is so loose and, and funny. We sing a lot, like there's going to be songs and music going on in the locker room all the time. I'm a great dancer and I feel I'm a great singer. I do it every day, I'm a, I sing every day, but I know I can dance, I just don't know. People tell me, hey, you can sing, but I think they're just being nice to me, so I don't know. <laughs> Marcus Slaughter's philosophy on life is both beautiful and positive. Look good, feel good, and play good. So I have to go get a haircut, so I have to make sure I look good. I gotta dress well, makes me feel good. So when I go into the game, I feel like I can play, I can play good. A7 Emporio Armani Milan played against Panathinaikos Athens in the game of the week. Milan found their first double digit advantage in the second period when Curtis Jarrell scored a three pointer, but the biggest lead came a little later thanks to another long distance shot by Alessandro Gentile. Antonis Fotsis, a former Milan player, opened the second half and led the comeback for the Greens, who ended the third period down by 10 with James Gist top scorer with 21 points. Dimitris Diamantidis reached the 2,000-point milestone in EuroLeague by bringing Panathinaikos to within three points with four minutes left. Gist dunking again. Samardo Samuels responded with a slam dunk of his own for the 73-67 scoreline. Then Zach Wright scored the last basket of the game, but it was too late for the Greek team. The final free throws decided the final score. Milan won their fifth top 16 game, 77-75, and are second in Group E. Sinan Goulet is now 30, and except for the four years spent in the US, he has always played in Istanbul, his native city, for different clubs. Nobody knows what a derby atmosphere means to the city better than he. I think for the players it's a little different because it comes out to the professionalism of the sport itself because we get on the court. For example, I play for Galatasaray, I used to play for FS and Besiktas. When you end up with the top quality players in Turkey, you play with these guys on national team and you're friends with them. They can be mentors for you as the older ones. And it's a different feeling for the fans when you win that game because some kind of goal for them is accomplished. You know, there are, of course, certain goals to reach. The Final Four, League Championship, the National Cups mean a lot to the fans. It's always fun games when you play those games. After so many seasons, Sinan knows almost everything about basketball. But there are still a few things that can surprise him. Last year, something happened that he will never forget. I think, first of all, I've seen one of the best sports viral. I think there are other companies that made great virals also. It was just amazing to be a part of the thing that, first of all, it was very surprising when, when first it happened. After that, the expression that we got from, especially from Turkey and especially from outside of people, I, I was asked about it, about it less unique, asking me if it was real and how they love it and everything. And I know that the company that's responsible for the commercial and the whole idea has received a numerous amount of awards from this commercial. And I think. The song's awareness increased, the player's awareness increased. I think it was just a great project to be a part of. And at the same time, like when I still watch it, it's kind of like gives me shivers to be seeing it, how it happened. 
These days, the relationship with the fans is not only on a face-to-face -face basis, but is also played out through the social media, which is something that Sinan takes seriously. My main, main goal with that is just to connect with the fans because there are a lot of people, especially in Turkey, who want to learn more. They want to get uh, some kind of like inside info of what the players go through. I try to share that and I try to I mean, increase the awareness of basketball, especially in Turkey. I'm lucky, I guess, to be part of it since the spurt of Twitter, especially when I started using more efficiently during the 2010. Uh, World Championship and after that it became like a bigger boom for me to reach out to the fans. Sinan is one of the most team orientated players of the entire Turkish Airlines Euroleague. All his skills are put to the good of the team. Nevertheless, in his career he scored one of the most spectacular baskets in Euroleague history. It was the 2010-11 season in a top 16 game against Partizan Belgrade. Uh, that year in Sinan Erdem, we had a good run as a team. And me and Kerem Yönlüm used to have that, that, those kind of plays, just the part of where he passes to me for a long pass for a layup. And it just came to me that when I got the ball that I might get fouled. So I just wanted to stay in balance to get up the shot. It wasn't on purpose that I made the shot, but at the same time, uh, if you see the video that I kind of like put an English to my hand, and I think that's kind of a shot that I try to get once in a while in practice, not just the, all the circus shot that I made, but just to get off the backboard in a way that the defender cannot reach to it. And it was a bit of a luck and a balance thing that I end up making the shot. the capital of Russia and one of European basketball's most prestigious platforms. We went to the home of Seska to be a part of the Russian derby. The Italian coach Ettore Messina, who now regards Moscow as his second home, spoke to us about life in the city. There are a lot of uh, nice things and uh, some uh, complicated things uh, that, <laughs> that uh, are not the cold, uh, because that, that's something you can really handle. Uh, I would say that it's more the, the darkness of the winter, for sure, for us, that uh, we are Mediterranean. It's a little bit difficult to, to adapt, uh, and uh, the very well-known traffic <laughs> is, uh, is a little bit of a problem. But besides that, I mean, we, we are, uh, with my family, this is our sixth season here. We are, we are having good time. We are, uh, our son grew up. Up here. Moscow offers a lot to all those passionate about basketball. Seska have won the Euroleague six times, and in the last 11 seasons, they have reached the final four on 10 occasions and have played five title games. CSK is a big club uh, with a big history, with a lot of titles, and a lot of big players play here. Uh, we can watch around. The gym is a lot of champions, uh, cups. You like little part of the big history. The numerous victories obtained at the Universal Sports Arena are the result of hard work based on attention to detail. I think the dedication that everybody puts in this club, um, in the organization, to help uh, the players and the coaches to do the best of their work. And uh, the fact that they really care for, for you as a person, not, not only for your professional qualities. They always take care of the small things, and probably this take uh, to have a big care of the big picture. The aim is to create a winning mentality, but there are also other goals. To represent in the best possible way with uh, heart and uh, with all your maximum effort uh, to represent this club. When just put the shirt of CSK, we just need to look here. It's like your heart starts to be red and blue. and passion will be very much on show in the Russian derby against Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar.
it was a special encounter that attracted the attention of an illustrious name, the coach of the Russian football national team, Fabio Capello. It is emotional also because I am a friend of Messina, so I'm here to support Seska because of this friendship. It's a great event, a great sport, and there is a lot to learn. It was guaranteed to be a spectacular event, especially considering the finale of the match played in Krasnodar, first round of the top 16. The lost in a tough one uh, at their home, you know, in overtime, so they're going to try to come back and get revenge. They're a team who, who's good at all positions, so you can't make too many decisions against them. We have to execute our offense, play, play strong defense, and then rebound the ball. We got to limit our mistakes. The first quarter saw the hosts put 29 points on the boards and earn a double-digit advantage. A lead that rose to 20 points in the second period before Lokomotiv started their comeback and narrowed the gap to just eight points at the break, at which point the arena rose to its feet to applaud a three-time EuroLeague champion, 2-1 with Seska, and a EuroCup victory last season with Lokomotiv. After 18 years in the game, Alexei Savrasenko celebrated his retirement. I'm very happy from this day. Today is my birthday and uh, I finished my basketball career. It's a great um, for me and for my family. I like uh, Euroleague, I like uh, basketball. Thank you very much. Once the farewell to the 35-year-old from Krasnodar was over, it was back to the game. The second half proved to be exceptional. Lokomotiv completed their comeback and actually took a small lead, thanks to a run of 16 points to one in the third quarter. The finale was edge-of-your-seat excitement. Milos Teodosic, scorer of six of eight from the distance, dominated the final minutes with 15 points from a total of 25. Derek Brown silenced the arena with a spectacular slam over Carl Hines, taking the visitors ahead again, but Aaron Jackson came off the bench, substituting an injured Till Dosic with 4.4 seconds left to sink the game-winning free throws as Seska Moscow outlasted Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar 94-93. We just show that uh, each game somebody of us can explode. Today was me, next day is Nenad, next day is Sony, you know, Victor. We have the guys who, who can do this. Now in his third Turkish Airlines EuroLeague season with Jalgiris Kaunas, Guard Vitenis Lipkevichus is finally starting to cut out an important role in the team for himself. I think I am like team player. For me, it's much more important team win than like individual stats. And I like to fight and to win. The most important thing for me is like win. I am going on court every time to fight. It's like it would, it would be like my last game. Like many Lithuanian players, Vitenis's main strength is his shooting ability. This gesture, both during the act of shooting and also in his movements on the court, come naturally to him. If you are in the right place at the right time, then shooting can seem easy. Small forwards, they are waiting. You know, when the small guy playing pick and roll, you just like moving around. And if you open, you get a, get a pass and you just shoot. Jalgiris have a special passer of the ball that helps improve the shooting of the players. We have in our practice Dr. Dish, you know, this shoot gun. So after every practice, you can like 
10-15 minutes you can make 200-300 shots, so it's very good. It always helps to start playing at a very young age in order to hone your skills. And Vitenis did just that. He first took up the sport at the age of seven in one of Lithuania's most prestigious basketball schools. It was Saturday morning. My father was reading newspapers and there was like invitation for small boys, you know, for Sabonis basketball school. And he asked me, maybe you want to try it, play basketball? I said, of course. A school that bears the name of a Lithuanian and international sporting legend, Arvidas Sabonis, which adds extra motivation for anyone playing at Jalgiris. He's the best player in Europe. He's like like example for us that we also can reach these goals like him. Nipkevicius is lucky enough to receive advice from the veterans in the team. Captain and Kunas, but also we have Tokas, Yasikevicius. These guys are very experienced. And for young guys like us, it's very good to have chance every day work with them. The success of Jalgiris is built on a great team spirit, with a few internal rules that make the whole environment and atmosphere in the locker room more fun, staff included. We have like some like rituals, like rule. So who is late in team practice or team videos? That guy needs to pee, buy pizzas for everybody, for all stuff, coaches, players. And a few weeks ago, it was like our point got Chishauskas. He was late on video a couple of minutes, so he bought pizzas for everybody after practice. Barcelona or Euroleague centre Ante Tomic was the outstanding player in Istanbul when his team defeated Anadolu FS 84-89 after a thrilling overtime. The Croatian player not only won the B Win MVP award of the round for the second consecutive week, but also set three new personal career highs. Tomic improved his own personal scoring record in Euroleague to 26, making 11 of his 16 two-point attempts and adding four of five three throws. His second personal best comes from under the boards, where Ante reached the unbelievable number of 15 rebounds. On top of all this, Tomic added three assists and drew seven fouls for a performance index rating of 40, his third personal career high and the best by far of this top 16 round eight. Let's check out the top three plays of the week. Number three, Madrid, Spain. Partizan with Boris Dallo looking for something, finds Terence Kinsey. He's driving to the basket, but Perusis goes up to deny him. What a block from Yanis Perusis. Number two, Istanbul, Turkey. One second on the clock, Barcelona losing by two. Brad Olison misses deliberately. Joey Dorsey follows it up, tips it in, and they're heading to overtime. Barcelona retain their perfect record. And the number one play of the week in Moscow, Russia. Final seconds of the game, locomotive trailing by one. Mantas Kalnietis to Derek Brown. What a finish from Derek Brown. Locomotive Kuban Krasnodar with the big play of the week. FC Barcelona and Fenerbahce Ulker Istanbul will share the floor in the top 16 round nine game of the week. FC Barcelona are hunting their ninth top 16 win in a row this season. The 21st consecutive win in the top 16. Fenerbahce Ulker need a win to fuel their hopes of advancing to the playoffs. This season, the two teams have already met twice in the regular season, when Fenerbahce managed a slim 75-70 victory at Ulker Sports Arena. FC Barcelona triumphed at home 94-81.
Their third meeting in Istanbul in round two of the top 16 saw FC Barcelona edge Fenerbahce 73-76, with Marcelinho Huerta scoring the last seven points for the winners. Big matchups between Turkish Airlines Euroleague superstars will take place next Thursday on the floor of the Plau Blaugrana when FC Barcelona and Fenerbahce Ulker Istanbul will clash in the next game of the week. Presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport.